Hey folks, welcome back to our Dice Tower preview. I'm Mark, and today we're taking a look at Extraordinary Adventures Pirates. Extraordinary Adventures Pirates is brought to you by Forbidden Games. It's for two to five players, ages eight and up, and games range anywhere from 30 to 60 minutes. In Extraordinary Adventure Pirates, you play as a pirate captain with three ships on three different sailing tracks. Each of these tracks all end at a central point. Ultimately, that's your goal to land there, but you need to collect victory points and treasures along the way. You'll be plundering ships, gathering their cargo and additional crew along the way to help you reach your end goal. Now, you're gonna be taking some of this plundered treasure into port and trading it in for fantastic treasures. And ultimately, the pirate with the most victory points is going to win the race. So this game features deck building and set collection. Deck building is all about maneuvering your ships across the ocean to that end point. And the set collection is all about cargo and turning that cargo or treasure into bigger treasure. This is what a typical setup will look like. Each player or a pirate will choose their color. They'll receive their pirate ships and their starting deck, which is 10 cards. Then you'll lay out the board and you'll populate it with cargo. And each of the merchant spots has squares below it dictating how many uh, cubes should be placed there. And these are randomly drawn from the bag. Then, based on the number of players in the game, will dictate how many treasures get revealed. And then you'll take the port cards and the merchant cards. You'll shuffle each of those decks up. The port cards will go off to the side and you'll draw three cards to start and the merchant cards will go on the map for later use. And then finally, bonuses are handed out. So why are there bonuses? Well, if you're, not, if you're the start player, you don't get a bonus. If you're the second player, you get to draw a random cargo from the bag. If you're the third player, then you get to pick any cargo you wish from the bag. And then players four and five, they're further down the list. So player four will get to draw a top card from the port deck. However, being the last player, player five, they actually get to choose any port card they wish. To start, each player will draw five cards from their deck, and now the game can begin. So what you're doing here is you're gonna play three cards in your turn, and that's simply all you're gonna do. There's obviously other things going on during your turn, but that's the essence of a turn, is you're gonna draw three cards and play them. So the three cards that you're looking at have some different things to take note of. So at the bottom, you'll note there's a movement off to the bottom right. And then potentially, not all the cards, but some of the cards have an action that you could possibly do off to the left of that number. But you can't do both. So you have to choose either the action the card calls for or use its movement points. Now, once you play those three cards, they go to your discard pile and then you draw your hand back up to five. And that's really the essence, again, of a turn. However, there's lots going on once you use those movement points. So you'll move one or multiple ships along any of the paths that you so choose. And as you move them out of the ocean, there's really nothing else going on but moving along the spaces. However, if you land on a merchant, that merchant you can plunder. You take the cubes and you raid their ship for extra crewmen, and you'll take a merchant card as well to add to your deck, and that goes to your discard pile as well. Or you might have used those movement points to move into a port, and ports are very important because then you get some upgraded cards to add to your deck using the port cards. And basically you can choose uh, one of the face-up cards or draw from the top of the deck. And again, those cards will go to your discard pile for hopefully later use as you shuffle and cycle through your cards. It is a deck builder. And then while you're in port, you can take all the cubes that you've plundered, all the treasure that you've plundered so far, and trade those in as sets for even bigger treasure, which will net you victory points at the end of the game. And there's some big point swings that can happen here. So getting the right loot in order to get the right treasures is key. Now, a couple other things of note. As you move along these tracks in the Caribbean, uh, you can choose to move forward or back. It's not always forward, so potentially you might go back to collect things and so forth. However, there are things once you destroy or take out a merchant, uh, that merchant is gone and you can no longer acquire cubes or acquire cards when you land on that merchant spot. And when you go to a port, 
uh, you can only hit each port once, so you can't double back and hit a port multiple times in order to get cards and treasure. Also, let's take a little bit closer look at some of these cards, specifically the port cards, because they are definitely more powerful than your merchant cards, just slowly sailors that you're stealing, and your basic deck of cards that you start with. So these do some very interesting things. There's even treasure cards that can net you extra victory points, as well as still have movement. All these cards still have movements associated with them. However, there's a couple icons to take note of. There's a card icon, card shuffling icon, that uh, shows that you will play this card down in front of you and it will be an active ability if you choose to use its action ability instead of its movement. So once you do, you'll lay it in front of you and then from the rest of the game, for this card specifically, you'll move two extra spaces on the black track once per turn. So that's a handy special ability you'll have for the rest of the game. And some of these cards will tell you to discard it after using it once, but in general, they lay in front of you and are extra actions for you to perform. And then there's our skull and crossbones. And this is potentially a very powerful card and with a powerful movement, so it's a trade-off. So if you use its ability, this card is gone and out of the game. And for this one specifically, you're gonna draw two new cards from the port deck, which potentially could get you even more powerful cards. But it's a trade-off, right? Because it has a movement of three. It's a pretty high movement value. So it's hard to give up some of those cards sometimes. But really, you're really trying to get those port cards, as well as get to the end and get the most victory points before the other players. So there is some trade-offs, like I said, but hitting up the ports is very important. Now, a special note on treasure. So you do, like in a three-player game, you're gonna start with 10 treasures, that's quite a bit. But if you do go through these treasures, everyone acquires them, and the last treasure is drawn, well, then you're gonna repopulate which is really nice, but that only happens once per game. So if you make it through another set of treasure, then that's it for the game. And you really are trying to make the beeline to the other end of the map. Now, once a player hits the end of the map, the Trinidad space and plunders the treasure galleon, that player will get to choose one treasure for free. So then you're gonna tally up victory points and you're gonna look at all the treasures you have, you're gonna get victory points that total whatever that total is, and then for each cargo cube you still possess, you get half a victory point. And then there's a race to see who's the furthest in the lead and, and, and who's way in the back. So based on, again, on the player count, will dictate what the first player gets, second player, third player, and so on. And whoever has the most victory points will be the ultimate pirate of the Caribbean. All right, folks, just a reminder once again, this has been a Dice Tower paid preview and everything you've seen here has been in prototype form. So keep a close eye on the campaign for any changes that still may occur. Now that said, you know, this game truly is a race and it's not just a race across the board. It's a race to see who can get the most treasure and who can get the best port cards. So there's a lot of races going on simultaneously, which I really like, and a lot of pressure. There's even a little bit of take that in here. But in general, it's a deck builder with some set collection and all about the victory points at the end of the game, seeing who the best pirate can be. And I really like that race pressure that it provides. All right, folks, so if this is like a game that would be of interest to you, I'm sure they would appreciate your support. I think that's it for me, and until next time, we'll see you at the table. So much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.